Now, often when making an arch, I will use a base object like a brick, and then I'll use an array modifier linked to the length of the curve, which then is deformed by the curve, and you end up with admittedly a very changeable object. So we can change the size and shape of the particular arch that you're making. However, it's not always an accurate model. And sometimes you do want that accuracy, and here's how to do it. So I've been playing around a bit with just modeling predominantly using object mode. So you're adding in primitives that match roughly the shape that you're making, and then you just continue from there. And I was playing around earlier with arches, and I learned how an actual gothic arch is made. So to demonstrate, let's go ahead and have a little bit of fun. Yeah, let's add in a mirror modifier straight away, and let's move this cube over here. We'll use it in a bit as the actual pillar and then finally the arch. I'm going to add in a mirror modifier. I much prefer searching and I'm going to set it about the center. So I need something to mirror it about. So I'm going to add in an empty at the center of our scene. Then I can pick that as our mirror object. And there we go. We've got something the other end. Now I really want this to be a one by one cube. So I'm in edit mode. I'm going to scale it down. And I'm going to make sure at the moment I know what the radius is between this cube here and the other cube on the other side. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five units. And I'm going to add in a circle in a moment of five units. I'm going to bring this down by 0.5. Let's add in that circle of five units. So five looks good. And finally, I want to make sure Oh, it needs to go all the way over to the other side. So it's actually 10. I tell a lie. Now, the number of vertices doesn't really matter, but if you're making something particularly large, you're going to need more. It's going to be halved straight away because we're only dealing with the top bit. I'm going to type in 48 there as a starting number because this is quite a bit wider. I'm going to rotate this around on the X axis, I think, by 90. Excellent. Now, why, are we, why have we used this? Well, if we go ahead and grab this cube this would be a pillar going up wouldn't it there we go now i can grab my circle the circle is key because if we wanted to have an arch going from one side to the other and it was just a simple one circle arch we could we could quite easily do that however if we go ahead and have two circles you'll notice the moment we do this, we form ourselves essentially a gothic arch. And you can make these circles larger if you want, or simply scale them up on the z-axis. It is important that those origins stay the same. And I believe if you make it too large, it's called a lance arch or something along those lines. I'm just going to leave that for the moment. What I can now do, and this is what I discovered when playing around, I'm not sure where else I'm going to implement it yet, but I found it quite cool that with that block selected, you could uh, change your snapping point to vertex and align rotation to target. Then when you go ahead, and I'm going to do a normal duplicate first and place it, look at that. That is actually rotating now around to the shape of our arch. And you can see here that as we try and snap, it's not really uh, in line with our pillar. Now we can change that because we're using that center point instead. We just go up to the snapping. Instead of doing closest, we can do center. Now when we go ahead and move things, it's going to snap to that center point. And then we can start duplicating and moving things up like so. Now, of course, this isn't going to be perfect and it's not going to, well, that's a cool uh, keystone at the top there, um, but this isn't going to be perfect. And of course, can we add another one down? Mm, kind of. But now this gives you the opportunity because they're all equally spaced. And in the past, I often had an issue with the array modifier. I'd often use an array modifier for this type of thing. And of course, you end up with not really knowing where the position of things are. Even if you start pulling things backwards and forwards, you've used a curve to deform it, um, and it may not be a curve that's exact like this. But now that I've got all of these as linked duplicates, I can literally go in. So we can make sure that we've got both of these selected. And when we're scaling, in fact, let's make sure X-ray mode's on, so I'm selecting all the way through our model. Um, when we're scaling, we don't want to scale it on the Y axis. So I'm going to scale and then shift and Y so we don't scale on the Y axis. So I'm just going to pull that out. Not going to be terribly accurate, but notice it hasn't scaled on the Y axis here. I can then select the next four, scale those not on the Y again. Otherwise, we end up with some problems. 
and that looks pretty good to me. And of course you can add in a bevel with a bevel modifier or just shift and B to add one in. And you've got yourself a perfect arch going up here that meets the actual definition of a Gothic arch with those two circles guiding the placement of our blocks. And of course, at the very top here, you can work on your keystone and make it look prettier if you like. And there you go. That's my quick tip of the day. Take care.